um, love it because we get to not labor. Although, how many of you have to work to get stuff ready for your family? Yes, indeed. But it's a whole different kind of labor, and so that's good. I was talking to my niece, and she was made, after the church service, they were having everybody over at their house. I think this is the first time they've done that, have everybody there. And they were uh, doing the flower beds and the, and the outside and the uh, inside, and they were. she was working really hard. And uh, she said, hopefully it won't rain with all that. And I, I thought, well, if it does, the good thing you did the inside. <laughs> get ready for them. Uh, but it, so it's you get ready in a whole different realm. So, right. so thank you for being here today. I'm just going to jump right in and just feel the presence of the Lord leading us yes. right into to the Word of God. Pray for my husband this morning. Yes. Thank you for your prayers. Uh, he has been hurting in his abdomen uh, yesterday and today. It wasn't uh, he wasn't feeling any better, so it was um, painful enough that he that I really need to stay home. So. Y'all pray for it. Amen. Yes. Amen. The glory and the power of God yes. that he is wanting to display in the earth in these last days is beyond anything that my human mind can wrap its head around. It's beyond anything that we've ever seen before. It's beyond anything that we that will, will ever that will ever be seen again. Yes. Can I say that? Yes. There's no way that we can even comprehend or understand because some of us have been in such a season of wait. Some of us have been in such a season of some things that I'm going to read here in just a moment. But can I tell you that in order for the God to reveal his glory and his power upon earth and vessels, He's got to prepare us. Yes. Yes. There's not a parent in here this morning that doesn't prepare your child before they go to school. Yes. Right. You put everything you can in into their hands that you think they're going to need. Right. Right. There's not a parent here that doesn't prepare the child for college, right. marriage. If you're going to do the best you can to yes. make sure that they have everything that they need in order to be ready for that next season in their life. I'm here to say it out loud to you this morning that the things that God has allowed you to go through is to prepare you yes. for what he's going to do in you and through you. Right, amen. Let me say this out loud. Don't settle for the mundane. Right, come on. That's Don't good. settle for the average in God's spirit. Don't right. settle for just tradition when you can have relationship. Don't settle for just having a little move of God when you can have a big move of God. Right. In your life and in your family and the church. Too many times we settle because our flesh yes. settles. Yes. Yes. It does. Lazy. Yep. Then want to do it if it requires something. Yes. Thank God in yes. his grace. Would you is this open? Yes. Thank God in his grace and his mercy that he will prepare yes. us and get you ready. You've asked him for it. Come on, yes. yes. Amen. We pray for it, Lord. I, I want to be used in this end time harvest. I want to yes. be saved first. Right. Amen. And and he loves us so much that not only does he want to make sure we're safe, but he wants to make sure that we get to experience his glory and his power. Is there a parent in here that wouldn't want to share all the goodness that you've got with your kids? Right, come on. You get, a, you get a bonus at work. You don't hoard that to yourself. What do you do? You, you share it. Somehow the rest of the family gets it. Yeah. You're, that's what we're supposed to, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, what do you say? I was asking the question. Oh, oh, we're supposed to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I be feeling it, brother. There was one. I can slip a little more in your pocket. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Every parent should have their own stash, right? Amen. <laughs> Especially if your kids get to be a little greedy. I don't know. Um, but there's not a parent alive that Come won't yes. prepare us yes. or get us ready for what's coming up. And that's what God is doing. He's getting us ready. So we're going to read some... Uh, you can stay seated for all this because it's several scriptures, but um, I believe God wants to reveal something yes. more to us. Some of you have read this before. You've seen it. You say, oh, here we go again. But but would you let God yes. actually take you somewhere in this? Right. You can know the scripture, yes. but does the scripture have you? All right. Come on. You can, you can quote the scripture, but does the scripture live in you? All right. Come on. Are you embracing what it's really saying? Yes. Anybody know the difference? I know the right. difference. I can quote words of God, yes. but am I believing it? Am I saying, you know, he tells me not to fear, but am I not fearing? All right, come on. Right, so we've got to let the word get in us 
and marinate it and marinate it and throw it all in here so that so that it will actually come out and will live it. And I believe God, that's what God wants to do this morning because he wants to, he's preparing us. He's yes. preparing us. Yes. Some of you, you don't realize how close you are to God using you in a mighty right. way. Yes. And don't leave that just on ministry because we're all ministers of the gospel in one way or another. Yes. We've heard that. Pastor has yes. shared that so beautifully. Yes. Uh, Bishop shared it so beautifully. Let us know that it's, we're all ministers of the gospel on. one way or another. Maybe not behind the pulpit, but, but to be honest with you, God's pulpit is out there. Yes. It's where you're living, where he's seeing you. This is only 10% of the ministry is right up here, standing behind here. Your ministry is touching the hand, moving, ministering to family, ministering to others, people that you don't know, saying things. I'm so proud of you guys, godly proud that you've gotten on. Some of you have gotten on Facebook and have said things uh, and, and spoke the word of the Lord and shared the word of the Lord. Yes. That's your ministry. You're getting you're recognizing that God called me to reach the field that I'm in. Hallelujah. Right, man. Good. Hallelujah. And so he's preparing you. And we, we can either get better or better. Yes. Don't let what's preparing you. Don't let the things that's coming against you. Okay? The things that you're dealing with in your body. Going into the hospital. The things that you're having. Don't let that make you better. Let it make you better. God, what is this for? What are you trying to show me? What opportunity are you setting me up for? His love is so good for you. I'm telling you that there's a reason behind everything that he does. Right. There is. And there's no power in the earth that can come against you and bring anything into your life that your father does not allow. All right. Let me say that again, because we really don't believe that. All right, come on. Yes. We like to believe it. We want to believe it. Yes. Okay? But yes. we're thinking, but what about all this other stuff I've had to deal with? You know, what would happen if it becomes such a worship to us? Oh, thank you for that. And we're not there yet, but God's going to give us revelation. And some of you have done that. Some of you have heard you say, you say that. I say we're not there yet, but I'm talking about living that life where, oh, you're allowing this? Oh, some good must be fixed to happen in my yes. life. Something great is fixing to take place in my life. Whatever your family member's going through, whatever, if you've asked the Lord to remove it and it's not been removed, you rebuke the enemy and it's not gone, chances are the Lord is allowing it. All right, come on. He doesn't bring it, but he gives it permission because he can't do evil. But he will step back so that things can take place. All right, yes, he yes. will. How does the uh, our blacksmith get that object that he's working on to perfection? Yes. Right. And he beats the living daylights out of it. <laughs> yes, he does. He does. Okay. But when that is done. It, it has got its purpose. Yes. Everybody in here has a purpose. Yes. I've been praying lately that God will reveal to you your purpose. Yes. I feel like that many of us don't know what our purpose is. But if, if, and even though we've got a general view that I'm supposed to reach people and I'm supposed to talk to people and I'm supposed to minister and I'm supposed to love the Lord, we get a general view. But God wants to give you a, a clear cut right. picture of what he wants to do in you. What fivefold ministry yes. does he want to possess to operate through you? Is it a teacher? Is it a pastor? Is it how does he? What spirit uh, gift of help does he want to give? What, what ministry gifts and all does he want to operate in your life? What is he giving you? You, that God wants to do through you. Yes. He wants to magnify that in these last days because of the world that right. is in darkness. Let's be in the light. God wants to give us something to, to give out to others so they can feel the love and the presence and the power of God. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, amen. He wants to do that in us. Job, let's turn to Job 1. We're going to start at uh, verse 6. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord. The Lord knew where he was. It was a one of those just sort of questions. He knew exactly what he was doing. Yes. The Lord has dibs on uh, the, uh, your enemy at all times. Trust me. Yes. He is not ever. Uh, it's just like kind of like the same question he asked Adam and Eve in the garden. You know, yeah. he knew it. He knew. He knew. Yes. He knew. But yeah. he's so he's so awesome like that. Yes. You know, I'm just going to ask you. Uh -huh. God will talk to you more in questions sometimes than He does in answers. Yes. Come on. He'll ask you, well, what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. What? So that we'll respond. He yes. wants. 
He wants relationships so bad. Yes. He wanted a relationship with Abraham so bad that he came and, and had that long conversation about how many was going to be saved in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Right, yes, he did. He wants, he's waiting for you to come talk to him and to fellowship. I love the first song because it says, I'm going to wait on the Lord. Right. That is the most important. If you don't do anything else in this lifetime, wait on the Lord. Wait on him. Sit and wait on him. Let your spirit wait with be with Jesus. Minister in him and let him minister to you. You can never give to him. I'll give him. You can't no. I'll give him. I'm telling you right now, you can't outgive him. You start ministering to him, and you watch who walks away more blessed. All right. All right. You watch that you don't receive more than what you just gave. Right. Hallelujah. That's true. It's awesome. God is awesome. And yes. He multiplied in such a beautiful way. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so he says, uh, uh, the, and Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down in it. He's always looking for to start trouble somewhere. Yes, he is. So he'll go, and now he's not omnipresent. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Yes. He is not God. He is not omnipresent. That's he right. is not everywhere at every time. That's true. Sometimes what deals with us, we fight flesh more than we fight spirit. Yes. All right. We want to blame the devil when we need to, we need to submit our flesh. Right. Yes, come on. Then too, we got these little ants running around that it will wreak some havoc, and we need to we need to learn to take authority over those too. Yes. You know, but he, the devil is not everywhere at every time. He cannot be that way. It is not in him to do that. He cannot right. do that. All right, so it says in verse uh, verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, some of you can quote this, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made a hedge about him? Mm -hmm. Now let me read this again, because you need to hear this. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Let me read it and amplify it. Have you not put a hedge about him in his house and all that he has on every side? You have conferred prosperity and happiness upon him in the work of his hands, and his possession have increased in the land. How many can say, I have been blessed? Surely I have been blessed. Surely I have been blessed. Yes. How many of you and God have ever said, man, you're so good to me? Um, yes. yes. Yeah. You that could have that could have happened. That could have happened. But that could have happened. Yes, amen. Uh -huh. You are so good to me. Oh, and yes. that's in the middle of going through something you thought was bad, but you got a glimpse of how worse it could have been. All right. Yes. 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 And, yes. and you felt the spirit of the Lord tell you, I saved you from that. Yes. Yeah. Jesus. I kept you from that. Right. I watched over you from that. Somebody needs to know that. You need to know that your father has you this morning. Yes. He loves you this morning. Everything that I have, he has given me. And it has been such great. And I'm not talking about just earthly blessings. How many of you can say you have felt the peace of God when you oh, yeah. should be feeling peace? Oh, yes. Amen. 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 I've watched some of you go through some stuff and I see the glory and the presence of God on you that is just beautiful and, and that ministers to the body. Yes. Right. It ministers to us. Yes. Because a lot of times we don't tell, you may not tell people what all you're going through, but you'll see somebody else going through something and they're doing it with such grace and with such mercy and such blessings of the Lord. You're right. thinking, I can get through mine if they can get through theirs. All right. Right. Come on. Amen. Sometimes they would say, they're seeing a little worse than mine. I really know I can get through mine. Yeah. Right. Come on, yes. right. That's true. That's, that's God upon us. That's God with us. Verse 11 says, pour forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee without face. This is what Satan said. The Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Of only upon him put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. He had to get permission. I know we've heard this a thousand times, but as we're entering into these last days, when you God tells you to speak a word and the enemy comes at you saying you speak that, they're going to beat you up like crazy. We need to put that spirit in its place and say nothing can happen to me except the Lord allow it. Wow. Nothing can happen to me except the Lord allow it. And the only reason reason he would allow it. Hear me today. Come the on. only reason that he would allow it is so that I can be saved and can experience his glory and his power. Right. Yes. That's it. Yes. Don't believe me? Let's yes. go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. We're going to go to verse 12, chapter 12. 
Now, I don't know who this is for, but sometimes we can become brass. All right. Come on. Where we're going. God would let that happen. Come on now. <coughs> we get a little prideful. Help us. Get a little attitude. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. I don't know about you, but at the end of this day, I want to be saved. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. I don't want to go through the act of being humble. But it's just either heaven or hell because if you get rid of my pride, I don't want pride. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. I don't want it in my life. No. You understand what I'm saying on yes. that, right? Amen. So the Lord in our prayer time, we'll feel his presence so strong in our life, and we'll say, we'll, we'll, we'll start talking. We'll say, Lord, prepare me for this. Prepare me for that. Take this out of me. I recognize that it's there. Take it out of me. And then we go through something, and we're wondering, what was that for? And the Lord said, I'm answering your prayer. Yes. yes. Come on. I'm taking it out of you. Mm -hmm. And we all, we look at it, it's the, oh, the pain that we go through, that pain in that season. We don't look at the glory on the other side of that when we're like, I don't do what I used to do. Thank you remember, can I, I know I can pick on you. Because she's talking about she used to be this person. Something about she said, boy, if that was the girl that I used to be, this is what you would have got. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Did you get that way overnight? No. Mm. <laughs> Through experiences mm. and training. Uh. And training. <laughs> You train flesh. Curses is what it was. Is what? Generational curses. Yes. That's what it was. Generational <laughs> curses. And we don't realize, sometimes we don't realize to ask for something and to seek God in something. I wish, I wish our human nature would just seek God first, but it yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Right. Come on. Your flesh does not want anything that's uncomfortable. Your it's flesh doesn't right. want to put anything. It don't, it don't mind doing it if it, if it does, you know, benefits the flesh. All right. 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 But if it's contrary to that flesh, man, you know, it rises up. Yes. yes. And you say, well, I know it don't. And let me ask you to fast three days next week and see what happens. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The Thank spirit you. might be willing. Sure, I'll do that with you. Mm -hmm. Two days and a half, two and a half days in, you're like, oh, man, it wouldn't even hurt if I just, if I just give in just a little bit. Let me just give in just a little bit. Yeah. Let me go back. She was talking about the train. You train flesh. <laughs> You train it. You 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 have to submit it. Yes. yes. Submit it and train it so that you can teach it not to do it. How do they? You know, we train things that we want different in our life. We've got to right. we got to do that in our spirit. Say no, girl. Down, girl. Down, girl. Uh, right. Yeah. You're not doing that. Right. No flesh. You you no stomach. I know you really want fried chicken. I hate it that we don't have a Kentucky fried chicken. Amen. Anybody out there that can do anything about that, we need you to fix it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're not supposed to live in this lifetime without Kentucky fried chicken. Just Amen. I got nothing against the rest of them, but you don't have the original recipe. That's, That's all. Right. Amen. 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 And, so you see where my flesh dwells. <laughs> Down girl. Down. That's in the chicken. God must be having me back for chicken. That's what it is. Um, That's oh, it. I'm now completely off the subject. Uh, so he, he, God is, well, I don't even know where I'm going from here. <laughs> Down girl. Down girl. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Second Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. Now, we don't fast. I say this, and you know this, but some of you are new in the Lord. You don't fast to move God. You fast to move you out of the way. Right. You fast to get your flesh in submission. Yes. So if you're fasting to move God to answer something, you're going about that with the whole wrong motive. You're not going to get an answer that way. Right. But you go in there and you say, Father, I'm submitting myself so I can hear your will. How do you want me to pray? Because if he's supposed to speak the word and I need to hear that word, once I hear that word, I speak that word, that's when things happen. Yeah. That's when things change. Right. That's when miracles take place. <laughs> not because I just, not just because I desire it. Yes. You do that in prayer. You pray about that to the Lord. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. So chapter twelve. Let's do one through ten. 
And it says, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Let me, I'm going to read the Amplified. You follow in yours. Uh, let's, let's skip down to, um, to verse 6. Should I desire to boast, I sh shall not be a witness, braggart, for I shall be speaking the truth, but I abstain from it, so that no one may form a higher estimate of me than is justified by what he sees in me and hears from me. Verse 7. And to keep me from being puffed up and too much elated by the exceeding greatness, the preeminence of these revelations, there was given me a thorn, a splinter in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to rack and buffet and harass me to keep me from being excessively exalted. Now you have to know him. Paul at this time was keep getting attacked by something. People have said that it's various things, but it was he thought that it was the enemy. And as a, as a uh, servant of the Lord, he was used to binding and rebuking and taking authority over this enemy that was attacking him right. that he felt coming after him. But nothing was changing. Right. And so he was going to God three times and went to God to say, Lord, take this from me. What is this? Anybody have those moments in your right. life? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You pray and you pray and you pray and ask the Lord to take it and didn't take it. Yes. Okay. All right. So this is where he was at. And he says it was to keep him from being puffed up. The glory of revelation was so strong on this man. Yes. He, God was revealing stuff so much in his life. Now, let me say this. You may not feel like that you're on a level with some people as far as revelation, but you've got to understand that any revelations that we get can cause us to be puffed up because it's so glorious and so wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Anything the good that God is doing in your life and doing through you can cause you to get a little bit mm -hmm. yes, amen. head heavy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thinking too much about now maybe you don't struggle, maybe no one here struggles with that. I don't know. But God in his glory doesn't want us puffed up because it's not in my strength. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. It's contrary to what our flesh says. Or we try to be strong for Jesus, and God has to work on us to get the strength out of us so we'll be weak that he can be strong. It's so contrary to what our flesh wants. I don't like being weak. Weakness is a dirty word in my mouth. Anybody else feel that way? I don't like to be weak. Right, come on. We grew up pretty independent. My mom raised three strong girls. If you met my two other sisters, I am the least strongest. And so you know, God help us. Right. Okay, she raised us to be very strong women. All right, and so for years, God has been beating the control out of my life. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now maybe, maybe nobody else in here and I know I am being so open but I, it's human nature I just got to admit it I like to control certain things right. especially if it's going to cause me any type of pain yep. or sleep yes. Amen. uncomfortableness yes. call it flesh I don't think it's just me I think it's just flesh I don't like it I like I, oh yeah. And so God wants to use us. Uh -huh. He's prophesied over us. He's said things about us. He's got a plan for us. Yes. But there's this puffed up stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Help us, Father. That he's got to keep in, in check. Because we want to be saved. Yes. Amen. I want to be used, but I want to be saved right. more than I want to be used. So how does he do both? Because he's got to have a vessel. Yes, amen. amen. And so he allows things to come into your life. Maybe somebody on your job that don't like you. Yeah. It was all going good until they got hired. All right. Man, I, I was feeling like that this was my domain. All right. God was blessing. And then somebody gets hired. That took away my peace. Yes. That caused me issues when I'm trying to be nice over here. All right. I don't know who this is for. Come on. Or maybe in your family. Maybe in your own self. 
All right. Amen. What is this God? And I'm over here rebuking the devil. And Satan can be behind me. Find it up. Maybe I'm the only one, but I don't know. No, <laughs> when God is wanting to say, you going to give that to me? You going to hand that to me? All right. Your need for whatever that is, whatever's causing that attitude, whatever's upsetting your apple cart, whatever emotion, you going to give that to me? All right, come on. And we'll, we'll, he'll allow us to sit in that until we do? Yes. Thank God. Yes. I don't believe removing it until I do. Because sure. if I keep that attitude, yes. we can we can get rid of people how many ways? In our mind. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at some of you because I know. And I'm you know what I'm saying. We're not getting rid of actually getting rid of people. We're talking about getting rid of the the, the pain that we're feeling coming from them, getting rid of the struggle that they're bringing into our life, getting rid of that 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 confrontation, that that attitude that we don't want to deal with when we go to work. We we just hey, okay, don't can we just all love Jesus and get along kind of thing. Yeah. Right. And they're not you're contrary to my peace. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I have peace. And now this is not peace. What is this? And so we find out that rebuking it does not make it go away. <laughs> yes. So it says, verse 8, three times I called upon the Lord and besought him about this and begged that it might depart from me. Begged me. He said, I begged. Yeah. That's the amplified where he sat down. He says, he begged. <laughs> Take this away. I don't want to deal with it anymore. I'm going to say this. I feel this for a few of you. I know you're going through a lot of financial struggle. And you've rebuked the devourer. And, and sometimes the devourer is us. So be careful what you rebuke. Yes. That's right. true. Sometimes we need to repent. Become good stewards. Yes. You want to get off on that subject. But we're, we're asking the Lord, Lord, take this away. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want to deal with this. There's a, we've heard our bishop say this, and it's so true. There's, when a ship goes in, it's got to hold some form of cargo. That little line that's on the, on the, the ship's out exterior is a way that they judge. It has to have, if it's got too much weight, it'll sink. If it's got too little, it'll flip over. It can capsize. Right. So there has to be a weight. Right. There has to be something that weighs that thing down enough so that it will travel like it's supposed to. Right? right? Yes. Right. Father, thank you for the weights. Thank you for the things that you're allowing in my life that keep me grounded. All right. That keep me from getting puffed up. Yes. That keeps me thinking more highly of myself than I ought to because I can do nothing without Christ. Everything good in me is God. Yes. Amen. Everything good in me is God. Amen. I'm not trying to earn it. I'm letting him do it through me. Yes. That's where we're heading, right? That's how we're getting there. So when his his grace and his mercy, he says, let me add a little bit of pepper. Let me add a little pepper in your dinner there. We'll season it just right. Right. How many of you have ever tried to, you know, you sniff pepper? That's miserable. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, why did I have to breathe right at that moment as I was putting the pepper in the bowl? <laughs> We're like, oh, oh my goodness, how does stuff, why does it make it taste so good? I don't put a lot of pepper, but not that that matters, but anyway, <laughs> thought it shared. Okay, verse 9, and he said to me, my grace, my favor, and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger, and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed, and show themselves most effective in your weakness. His power shows himself most effective when you're at your weakest moment. Right. That's when people see God. Yes, amen. That's when people see God. That's when you see God. Yeah. All right. Because you know your weakness. 
You know when you can't do that. Just look at this. Just use this example. How many times you, you, you've been called to fast? You wanted to fast. You wanted to give it to the Lord. But you were you felt like you were just too weak to do it. You just couldn't do it. But you said, God, give me the grace and mercy to do this. And at the end of that day, you realize, oh, my goodness. He fasted through me. Right. I, went, I didn't think about food not once today. Or if I did, it didn't bother me. Right. Something as small as that. Mm -hmm. I remember they used to call these uh, prayer meetings, you know, these two or three hour long prayer meetings. I think mean, I can't pray no three hours. What am I going to say for three hours? <laughs> I don't even, you know, I'm getting into 15 minutes. I'm like, I don't even know. Stop. But when you let the Spirit pray through you, you don't have to come up with nothing for three hours. The Spirit prays through you in three right, hours. Amen. That's what he's talking about. Putting ourselves out of the way and let God do it in us. Right, amen. Whatever struggle you've got right now, let the glory of the Lord be revealed. Well, I'm going to pick on you, Levada. She's gone through some financial issues, but again and again and again and again, the Lord has shown His glory yes, and His amen. power. When you can yes. do nothing, right, amen. when you can do anything to fix it, anything to change it, He's come in again and again. Amen. That's what He wants to do. That's what the world needs to see. They don't see Jesus except through us. Right. They don't see how good he is except they see how good he is to us. Right. They don't see how blessed he how, how much he blesses us until he sees them blessing us. Right, amen. And we say I want to be a conduit, but 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 yes. die, 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 die. I want to be a conduit when it means all good stuff right. and not bad stuff. And Job even said it and when his wife told him to curse God and die. He says, can we expect only good from God? All right. Come on. Should we be only expecting the good? My father, when, and, and we say this, and I've used this many a time, but I won't say it. How many times you were made to eat your broccoli? Yeah. Finish your plate. <laughs> eat the greens you didn't want. How many times were you made to get up and go to school when you didn't want to go to school? Why? Because you had to do it. Right. You needed to do it. The parent in your life, the father that you had or mother that you had, whoever was predominantly growing you up, raising you, right? They made sure that. And so let God do that in our lives. And let's quit being bitter about it and say, Father, thank you for this. Because when we can take that attitude, something happened in Paul that changed his attitude and it was revelation. All right. Revelation changed his attitude because this is what he said when we go down. It says, uh, For I will therefore will go more gladly glory in my weakness and my infirmities that the strength and power of Christ may rest, and it says here, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. All right. right. That the glory and the power of God, the power of God, can make a tent over you. Yes. Woo! I want you to understand what that means. God making a tent of power over my life. Yes. Somebody looks like I look at some of your lives and I say that the Lord walks with them. The Lord is with them. They let God be in charge of their life. Is it not the most beautiful display of the glory yes, and the amen. power of God? Yes. 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 When I know that somebody is an introvert and God uses them to, to speak a message with such boldness and you know that is God, they didn't get that way overnight. Something in them had to get, you know what I'm saying? God is the glory of God and the power of God working through them. And I'm here to tell you, God wants to do that in you. He wants to speak to you. You're going to minister to somebody. All of a sudden, the presence and the glory of God is going to come out of you and to minister in such a way that you're going to walk away going, Wow. All right. Yes. Wow. Some of you've had those experiences in the elevators. You've had those experiences when you're walking. And so but the way God wants to do it, He wants to increase that. You cannot have a let's just go, let's go small. A fifty thousand soul revival. And somebody not risk getting puffed up because somebody's going to be used over that. All right. Yes, amen. Okay. God uses you to lay your hand on someone's foot. I remember when we were, um, Justin was little, we were going to uh, Brother Cisco's, that's Elder Cisco, he just passed away. Loved him dearly. We, we, we was, he was our pastor for a season of time there when he was in Columbus and our bishop. And uh, we were there, and Justin was just little. He's probably, uh, 
I want to say eight years old. And so there was a man in the church that broke his uh, foot and he was walking on crutches and he felt the Lord say, well, can I have your son pray for my foot? And I'm not giving glory. Trust me, it's not good to say that. Nobody, nobody gives glory for this. I'm just showing how God uses everybody, every, every, no matter their age. That's right. true. Okay. That is he was true. eight years old. To my knowledge, he had not prayed fast. Yeah. Okay. But he said, I feel like your son could pray for me. He prayed for him. Next thing you know, the man's running around the church. God did an instantaneous miracle on his ankle. And let me say this. There's a difference between healing and miracles. Miracles are instantaneous. Healing take a, takes a second. Yes. It goes into healing. Yes. <clears throat> kind of like a bruise. Bruise kind of takes. So you can't say that, well, because I didn't get a miracle, I'm not healed. Mm -hmm. You can get a healing. Yes. yes. That's Amen. true. And a few days later, it can show up. Right. Amen. That's true. So don't limit God. And sometimes God will do an instantaneous miracle in your life. And you're going to know that that was a miracle because it happened right then and right there and you saw it. Yes. Amen. 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 There's a difference in that. Sometimes we get hung up <coughs> because we go home and we're still feeling something. And then we, we, we speak away our healing. Because yeah. 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 we're thinking he didn't do nothing because we're still feeling something. Oh, no. <coughs> you take that word, you hold on to that word. So no matter the age, no matter what you're doing, let God use you. And that's what he's going to do in these last days. He's going to use us, but he's going to get ready. And so verse 10 says, for, and so for the sake of Christ, I am well pleased and take pleasure in infirmities. He takes pleasure in infirmities, insults. Okay? I want you to think in your life here just for a moment. Infirmities. Had any? Anybody's knee hurt? Yes, come on. <laughs> and the reason I say that, can I tell you how many knees, knee problems we've had? In, in the body of Christ? Yeah. I can't tell you how many people have me pray for the knee. Mm -hmm. Right? Infirmities, insults, hardships. Got a dear friend. She has been through it. She's a pastor's wife. She has been through it physically. And I sit over here and I'm going, oh, goodness. And I know she probably rebuked everything from A to Z. And God has shown her some stuff. I can't wait to see what the Lord has shown her. But we felt, I felt very strong yesterday as God was dealing with me about this message. I thought, God's fixing to visit you. His glory and his power is residing on me. And I'm going to tell you something. When we get to praying, because there's a group of us that were part of the prayer team um, <coughs> district-wide. And so she... We get to pray, and I'll tell you what, there is no doubt the power of God is on her. When she gets in the spirit, it's like you can feel something just shake like this. Just vibrate. Mm -hmm. Now, would she would love to have had that without going through that? Well, yeah, don't we all? Mm -hmm. We want that. But you risk so much more spiritually. By God not taking the puff out. Right. We don't want hell. We do not want hell. And we don't realize how bad we don't want that. Because right. we've never been. And our flesh doesn't understand that. But he understands it. Yes, amen. He knows. And his love for us is so intense. He says, I want so much to share this with you, but I've got to know you can handle it. God, if God blessed you with $100,000 and you wanted to give your child, you want to leave that in their hands because you knew you only had a day and you were going out of here and you knew that that was going to pass into their hands. Would you want them to be ready to know how to handle that? Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. If you've earned something of business all your life, you worked hard to, and you're fixing to pass that on to your children, are you going to pass it to someone who's just going to blow that by like it's just nothing? Are you going to pass it to someone that's not going to care about it as much as you do? Are you going to pass it to someone who's just, their heart's not even in it? Are you going to get them ready? You built, you've spent 20 years building up a business. Right? Yeah. 
and you know your time is limited and you want to pass this to your kids, what do you do? Now, God's not limited. So that may be, hopefully you understand the part of that, that, that example I'm using. What do you do to get him ready? Because he said he won't share his glory with no man. He's not going to share that with us. We couldn't handle it, guys. Do you realize that Moses wanted to see the glory of the Lord and he had to hide him in a cliff and put his hand over that cliff so that he could, he could even, and he only saw the hind parts of him because if he had seen his face, he would have died? But this is what's so awesome. God wanted him to see it. Just as much as Moses wanted to see it, God wanted to show him. But he knew the limitations in the humanity versus what he was fixing to show him. God understands the limitations in my flesh and humanity of what he's fixing to show us. Right. The church isn't going out with a whimper. The church is going out with power. Right. Amen. Amen. The church is going out where we're, we're going to know that the glory and the power of God is upon us. Yes. Don't judge what he's going to do then by what you're feeling in your flesh right now. Right, amen. I don't believe that we have tasted the depth and the spirit that God has taken us. Right. No, I know we haven't. They were translated in the Holy Ghost. Right. Yes. Philip was translated from where he was at right. to someplace else right. so that the glory of God could be revealed through him. Do you trust God to get you ready to translate you? All right. Some of you are like, don't choose me. I don't want to go. <laughs> Aren't you tired of limiting it? All right. Can we trust him? That he's not, some of you are like, well, I just don't know. I'm so afraid to get involved. Because if I do, I, I'm, this might happen to me and this might happen to me. And I, I might lose out with God. Don't you trust him to be able to take care of that? Don't we trust him to be able to make sure that we're saved at the end of this day? Yes, amen. Oh, God. Get us ready. All right, let me go on. I'm going to close. Insults. Got any of those? Hardships. Got any of those? Persecutions. Got any of those? Perplexities and distresses. Got any of those? You're perplexed. You don't know what to do. I don't know which way to go. I don't know which way to turn. Any of those. For when I am weak in human strength, then am I truly strong, able, powerful, in divine strength. Yes, amen. I will yes. absolutely. He's going to tell me. I can release control because he's going to tell me. Yeah. I don't have to figure it out because he's going to tell me. I don't have to know what to do because he's going to tell me. Anybody believe that? Yes, yes. Amen. He's going to do it in us and through us. And that's what we want. But he's going to make sure we're saved in the process. Yes. I don't know what you feel like you're fighting right now. Yesterday, and I was going to say, Mark, I'm changing the subject, but I, let me put that on pause just a second. I kept getting glimpses of the amount of glory that he was. And it was just small glimpses because I, I don't even I I don't even know what I would do if he showed me the whole thing. I'd probably explode right in my chair. <laughs> God, but I would see glimpses of the glory that God would show just over Missouri County. <laughs> We're thinking Missouri County. What's in Missouri County? Souls. This place is so strategic. The house that we got, this may be nothing to you, but God showed me and come out. We're right across from College Park, so we're right there. So go, I don't know, I don't, I don't know feet, but we'll say like 50 feet, there's Ridgewood. On this same street, they can't help you realize, but on that same street, it's Ridgewood, Clute, and Lake Jackson. I pull out, and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, right here. Next thing you know, I'm seeing the Richwood sign. Okay. And 
then I'll go this way. Okay. <laughs> and I thought I was just getting a house. <clears throat> and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, I'm positioning you. Because the prayers that prayed in my home, they bounce on all of the rich ones. And they're all in clicked. And they're bouncing them like jacks. And I said, oh, God. I don't know if you feel that, but I feel that. In the spirit, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh. We've been starting a new prayer drives around Missouri County. And around the Prince Edward County is big. It took us, one day we did that, it took us six hours. Of course, we got stuck behind some traffic. That was some, oof. People say, well, you're wasting gas like that. Well, you can call it wasted if you want, but that's not what we were doing. That's not what the Holy Ghost was doing. It wasn't, it wasn't me. It was the Holy Ghost. Because I got to be honest with you, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what to pray here. Because it looked like just woods. It looked like just fields. I'm thinking, what do I need to pray here? But the whole time I'm praying, I'm seeing souls, and souls, and souls. Yes. Yeah. And I can't go into detail, but it wasn't long after that. We had gotten a, I talked to somebody, and they had shared something that had happened up in Rosario County, up by Pearland area, <clears throat> that affected someone that was not walking in the Lord as strong as they used to be. And I thought, this is related. This is, this in the spirit is touching everybody. It's going to touch everybody. The backsliders, the people that we, I don't even know. Some of you that have been here forever, you can tell me how many people that you know that used to walk with God in full strength, they're coming back. Amen. And let me say this in the Holy Ghost, don't be going out as they're coming in. Right. right. Amen. The Bible says that, that, that the men of perdition wouldn't come except for a great falling away comes first. My husband and I were talking about this. Don't be, don't be one of those that fall away from the church. Right. Fall away from the truth. Fall away from those things. Don't be, don't, don't, don't go out looking for something different than the Spirit of God, the presence of God, the glory of God. Don't go out looking for that and things and materialism and the worldly stuff when, when He's fixing to bring in a whole bunch that's coming in. Don't, don't cross them in the path as they go out. Make sure something in your mind and your spirit, you begin to pray, Father, don't, don't let me lose out what you're giving me right now. Right. I don't want to walk away from this ever. Right. What you have shown me, what you've done to me, what you've given me. Yes. Because we're so close. All right. It's already happening. Yes. I'm not. I'm. I'm. The glory of God being revealed when you're praying with people. There's nothing like that. Right. Amen. True. Nothing like knowing the person says, "I needed that. How did you know that?" Right. I didn't. He did. Right. We want to give Jesus. then trust him that he can get you ready to do just that. <clears throat> Say this. I mean, if you've gotten so weary of everyday life, anybody, I want you to raise your hand. Got so weary of the mundane in everyday life. What's it doing to you? I mean, what's that doing to you? That perplexity. Stirring up something, isn't it? <laughs> Stirring up something that says, ah, no. I'm believing it's not always going to be like this. I'm believing God's fixing to do something. All right. I'm believing He's fixing to use me like I've never been used. I'm believing I'm fixing to speak something that's going to encourage somebody. I'm believing that, that He's going to make the most of this life while I'm here because it's going to be glorious and powerful in His presence. Anybody feel that? Is it just me? I can feel that where I'm thinking I get real mundane with this, and something in the back of my head says, "Oh, the best is yet to come." I still got that candle, Sandra, that you gave me way back when we first came. You and Steve are giving us a candle, and it says, "The best is yet to, to come." I still got that, and I keep that, and every time I see it, I'm believing that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. So whatever he's got to bring into our lives so we can handle it, are you going to be okay with it? Yes, Jesus. It changed Paul's attitude. Yes. Father, let it change mine. Yes. Let it change mine. Yes, I don't want to look at it anymore. 
is dread. No. I want to look at it as, oh, if you see, yes. I need that. Yes, Father. If you see, I need that. Because nothing comes to me except God giving permission. All right. Amen. Nothing comes to me yes. except God giving permission. David even said that. I've said this many times, but the Lord brought it to me. They were walking along as servants. Somebody was insulting David, hurling insults at him. Yes. And the servant says, you want me to basically go me take care of him? Yeah, come on. And David said, no, what is it to me if God has allows him to do that? That's right, amen. Yeah. What, what is, what, what do I need, I need to earn? I can't do nothing about that. If God allows that, I can't do nothing about that. I need, I need to let him. Yes. Do you trust him enough? All right. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Father, you know, every eye closed. <clears throat> do you trust him enough? Because what it comes down to is trust. All right, yes. What it comes down to is do you believe your father loves you? Because the enemy tries to tell you he doesn't love you because if he loved you, you wouldn't be going through all of this. That's a lie. All right, come on, yes. That's a lie. Yes, Jesus. He gives us the power and authority and dominion to take authority over. If we're not, that's not God's problem. It's not his fault. Right, come on. But then if he's allowing it, he's doing it for a good reason. Yes. Not to beat up on you. Yes, Father. Not to beat up on you. Yes, Father. Even though that's the first thoughts we have. God, why are you allowing this again? Why are you allowing this again? Aren't you hearing me? Are you even listening to me? He heard you the first time you prayed. That's right, come on. He heard you the first time you said it. Come on. Father, fill me with trust. A spirit of trust. Let it be on me. There's a spirit of trust to be on me that I will trust you. I will trust you. He's good. Yes, he is. Come on, somebody might need to release release some pain just for a moment. I'm not going to belabor this, but if you if you held on to some some hurts from something. Come on, let it go. Now that you're getting revelation that God was not meant in it for your evil, but he meant it for an expected end. Come on, you can release that. Father, I give you that pain. I give you that circumstance. Lord, I, I, that I blamed you for. Yes. I forgive you, God. I, forgive me for holding on to it. I don't want to hold on to it. Yes, Lord, it's okay. Yes. It's okay if you want to use that, Lord, to, to help me to become what you want me to be. Yes. Jesus. It's okay if you want to allow that in my life. To teach us. Oh, God, let us recognize when it's you working. When it's the enemy that we'll see and we'll know the difference, Father. That we'll not accuse you falsely, Jesus. That we'll see and we'll know and we'll have that revelation of your great love for us. You said for us to pray that, that we would know the height, the depth, the breadth, and the length of your great love. Father, we lose that into this house this morning. The revelation of it, Father. That they'll see and they'll know, oh God, how much you love them and that you are with them. Lord, that you're the one that's walked them through this trouble. That you've given them strength to go through this. That you've given them grace and mercy, oh God. That you might get the glory and the power and the praise. It's all yours, God. It's all yours. We can do nothing without you. We submit ourselves to you. Come on, somebody needs to say that this morning. I submit myself to you. With this revelation and understanding, I submit myself to you. Not going to be better. I'm going to be better. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
When this is all said and done, there won't be one hand that can take glory for this. We're going to know. You know why we can cast our crowns on him when we get to heaven? We get that crown of righteousness and the Bible says that we're going to cast it at him. You know why we can do that? Because we're going to realize it was all him doing it. We couldn't bring about not one thing. Anybody labored the last few years just so you realize that you can't do one thing without God? Anybody? Did he allow you to spin your wheels just a little bit longer than what you wanted to just to show you that you can do nothing without him? Anybody want to say amen on that? Amen. Do nothing without him. Do nothing. I can't prompt this. I can't push this. I can't promote this. I can't make it happen. And I don't have to. I don't have to. I'm going to surrender again. Surrender. Here I am, Lord. I'm a conduit. I don't even understand what all that means to the full capacity, but I thank you. I thank you that you're making this, getting this girl ready to be a conduit. You're getting me ready to be a conduit. Hallelujah. When they went up to fight, Gideon went up to fight, they had their, uh, I call it sticks with fire. And they put the pitchers on top of it. And as they, when the sound was given and they were told they could do it, they broke those pitchers and the light and the sound from the army went forth. That vessel that picture is me. And in our brokenness, the light, the glory, the power of God goes for it. And when I can't do it and I am weak, that's when he's the strongest. Yes. 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 That's when he's the strongest. Yes. Ricardo, don't worry about what you can't do in your body. Don't worry about that you don't have the strength that you might have had a few months ago. Let God be strong. Enjoy the time that he's got you down to pray. Seek the face of God. Fellowship with God. Talk to God, whatever that is. Because he's getting you ready for something, Ricardo. Yes, Jesus. I can say that to everybody that's in this room. He's getting you ready for something. He's getting you ready. I thank you for the struggle. Yes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Enjoy your Labor Day. Did you have anything, Pastor? For some of you, this does not apply today. And how easy it would be to take this proverbial shovel, toss it over your shoulder to the right. person behind you. Right. Just because it doesn't apply today, we need to pray one more time. One more, that's true. Okay, would you close your eyes one more time? It may not apply right now. But if you live long enough, you serve God long enough, this will apply in every single one of our lives. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. Lord, right now, every spirit in this room needs to hear and receive what this is what is being said to us. God, today, for most of us, everything may be going well. But, oh, Lord, on the morrow, things could change very quickly. Come on. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we speak in faith, believing that what has been said, Lord, that with our spirit, man, we're going to receive this. I accept this teaching. I accept this understanding. God, I've been praying for wisdom and understanding. And so, Lord, you're giving it. So, Lord, well, I would be a fool to just pass it off. But so, Lord, by faith, I receive this word into my spirit today. For when I will need it, Lord, for when I will need it, God, it will be there. I can fall back on the truth of God's word. And I can rely on what I have heard today, what's things you have put into my spirit today, Lord, that on the morrow, 
In Jesus' name, it will be there. And I thank you for it. And I receive it. Would you say that some way in your, as you're praying, Lord, I receive this word. I accept what you have spoken. God, if there's conviction or a rebuke or a reproof or exhortation, Lord, I receive what you're saying today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by faith, Lord, I accept this word and I pray it today, Lord. When I go home, Lord, when I when I lay down to sleep tonight, I'm going to pray this into my spirit, man. So I'm not I'm not forgetting it anytime soon. In Jesus' name. And if you agree with me, would you say amen? Amen. amen. It is so. It is so. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Now, would you one more time just raise your hands in a sign of total surrender. Lord, I surrender to this spoken word. What it's, you've put in my spirit now, I surrender to the work of it. The, the, the preparation, God, that, that change that needs to happen in all of us, Lord. We accept what you're doing, what you're saying for your glory. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And one more thing very quickly. For those of you who were not aware of this, um, Sister Alina um, became very acquainted with Sister Lillian at the Washeteria and then the store next door. Yeah. She works at the Minute Market. Everybody in, around here that's been around here very long, you know where the Minute Market is in Freeport. <laughs> well, in all of their visitation and conversations, Alina was already hungry for the things of God. Sister Lillian just happened to be a conduit. Amen. To use yes. to further her along. So um, Monday night, um, a week ago, um, Alina came to prayer. And um, we had a conversation. And the Lord finally just said and told me, just shut up and pray. So I got the oil and I touched her forehead and immediately she started speaking with other tongues. It makes a difference when you're hungry. Yes, it does. God's always been willing to feed hungry people. Yes, amen. Amen. So Alina, if you will come, you've already had your baptismal certificate. So we want to give you your certificate for receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And somebody's going to take our picture. Stand on this side away from that door. Where? On this side. I'll stand on this side. It's a lot for you. All right. I'll, I'll share it with her. Okay. All right. So take our picture. Okay. All right. Awesome. Congratulations. <clears throat> and God is showing her things. He's opening her eyes to a lot of things. Man. I won't, I won't say those things out loud today, but there were a couple of things that we dealt with the other night, and I had to ask her, who told you that? Did anybody say that Jesus to you? did. She said, no, Jesus told me. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm okay with that. I won't say another word about it. <laughs> well, before we left our Bible study <clears throat> Thursday night, I asked her again, did anybody say this to you? She says, no. When you're hungry and you're open, Amen. God will show you things that you've never seen before. Yes, that's never. That's never seen these things before. She's barely even scratched the surface on reading the Bible. But yet she's already, if I can say it this way, light years ahead than where we would think she should be. Why? Because of a hunger deep inside to know a God that she just met in a way that she never knew that she could know him. Amen. 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 Jesus, I'm sorry, but we have become accustomed yes. to this. We've grown comfortable with Amen. relationship with Jesus Christ. But someone who has never known that she could have this kind of a relationship with God gets up at four in the morning and prays and reads her Bible for four to six hours in the morning. That's hunger. <clears throat> That's yes. Amen. 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 So, Alina... God bless you. Congratulations. God is showing you so many wonderful things. Remember, this is Labor Day weekend. Normally, we would only have one service. 
on um, this weekend. So uh, please keep that in mind. I'm not saying that there won't be anything tonight. That's up to Bishop and Sister Smith. Okay. It'll be, uh, uh, there, there won't be a PM service. So um, <laughs> just, just to make you aware of that. Uh, tomorrow is Labor Day. And <clears throat> if you're okay with that, we're still going to have prayer tomorrow night. Um, you have all day to barbecue, do whatever you're going to do. Uh, but I would ask that you please join us tomorrow night in prayer um, at 7 o'clock. And then since I do have this opportunity, I meant to say this earlier, but the prayer conference is starts Thursday. Yeah. And if you're, if you're planning to go, I'm asking that you participate Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in some kind of prayer and fasting. Uh, I'm not going to limit it or say what you have to do. What I would ask you to do is just simply to participate in some way on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in, in preparation for this prayer conference. God is going to show us things. God is going to teach us things. And we are going to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. So if you can do that, um, I'm not asking for a show of hands, but just between you and Jesus, find out what he would have you to do on those days. If you can't go and you want to log in, you can look under the church triumphant. There should be streaming it live. You can also go to the South Texas District Facebook page. They'll be streaming it live on there. But uh, I would go to uh, church triumphant uh, Facebook page and watch it right. there. And if you are connected with it already, you, you, know. you will get a notification anyway. They do YouTube live and they do uh, Facebook live. All right, God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. In Jesus' name.